normal. Uh, I want to thank the guys that can take well of me yesterday, but uh, the body doesn't recover as fast at my age, bigger guys as well. But I appreciate it. Uh, I didn't get a whole lot of dunks in yesterday, so we'll probably get another dunk. Hey, I want to thank, um, I want to thank uh, Bobby and DJ and Donna and Pedro and Taylor. And I missing one. Oh, Justin. That's Justin. That's Justin. Thank you guys. And uh, I'm having a really good time. You know, I think uh, us living in Arizona over, what do we do? We, uh, we make a big day off the coast. The coast looks really good out there. So uh, it's a bit of on the way. Let's pray. And uh, I'm going to share this story today. God, you are wonderful. And uh, I know that many times life circumstances can block that picture and can keep us from seeing that. So I just ask, I believe in your power, I believe in the love that is what you're about. May that come through our hearts and break through the darkness and the negative circumstances that sometimes seem to uh, surround us. And uh, we thank you in your name we pray. Amen. Okay, I need your help today, but this time, if I need your help, you can stay in your chair, okay? I can call you up. But I just need you to think about, so let me side up a little bit. Think about if you had 24 hours, that was all yours, 24 hours, okay? So the moment you woke up to 24 hours after that, you, would, you call it your perfect day. What would you do? Sleep. Okay, perfect day. Your perfect day, 24 hours, what would you do? Think about it for a second, I'm gonna ask for some brave folks to share on that, okay? All right, good. I'll sing the Jeopardy song while you wait. Don't see you. Are you thinking and singing at the same time? Yeah. Oh, okay.
then I would shoot some freaky code. And then, uh, all right. And then uh, I would go. I would, I would have little Russ come to some stories at his house. Very good. And then, um, and then I would go to uh, probably maybe Longhorn Steakhouse. <laughs> Magic Johnson. Okay, very good. All right, I like this. All right, anything, anything else? Nothing on this side? Everything's on this side. All right. Okay, one, two. Here we go. A day at Disneyland. A day at Disneyland. That's, that's it, right there. That's good. Okay. Favorite ride? You've never been to Disneyland? Me neither. Oh, I gotta set up my prayer list. You gotta go. Man, I'm serious. Okay. I, there was another hand. Was it the sheet? I mean, I guess you could die. I wouldn't want you to die. Oh. Here. No, we're going to hope you stay living and tell the story. <laughs> All right, so what's your perfect day? Um, Eat? Yeah. <laughs> Watch TV, okay? Go to masseuse. Okay, masseuse? Play basketball and stuff. Okay. Taco Bell. Yes. Taco Bell, really? Okay.
The next thing he remembers, by the time he was five years old, that his dad was not there anymore. It was just him and his mom. And uh, his mom, he, he remembers that he would wake up in his superhero pajamas, uh, footsie pajamas, right? Mid toe in these superhero pajamas. And he would wake up, and his mom would take him to his aunt's house, drop him off early in the morning. She'd work all day. By the time she came home to pick him up, he was still, and he was back in, I still, he was back in his footsie pajamas because it was that late that she got home. <laughs> and that was what he saw his mom. She had to work so much just to put her through, through uh, just to pay for the, the daycare, okay, pay his mom. And, uh, he did this over and over and over. He grew up, uh, and uh, he and his mom became best friends. And she would listen to him no matter what he talked about. He talked about whatever. She would listen. She would pay attention. They spent time together, and he loved his mom. His mom was his best friend. And as close as he was to his mom, that's how not close he was to his dad, who had left him when he was five years old. And his mom would say things like, well, your dad abandoned us. And uh, her heard this. No, dad didn't abandon us. He abandoned me. That's the way Herb saw it. And uh, his mom would talk to Herb about how the dad would never send money. The dad would never come to visit. Never wrote a letter. On his birthday, didn't do any of that stuff. So obviously, Herb grew up with a resentment towards his dad. Well, um, at about 14, uh, here's, here's what was really crazy. His dad lived 20 houses down. 20 houses down. At 14, Herb said, you know what? I'm going to be the bigger man here. I have no reason whatsoever to go visit this guy, but I'm going to do it because I'm the bigger man. So at 14, he goes down, 20 houses down, and he knocks on the door, and the new wife answers. And this look of shock and surprise, but she's glad to see him, and she says, come on in. And Herb comes in, he's a little nervous, doesn't know what he's going to say, because he has mostly anger and resentment. And uh, he comes in, and the first words out of the new wife's mouth was, you do know that your dad actually really loves you. And Herb remembers going, I wish this dude had a dictionary, <laughs> had a real definition of what love was, because what love is this guy has not shown me. And uh, so he goes in, he sits down, and his dad comes out. And it was extremely awkward. Lots of silence, not much eye contact. And uh, shared a few words, and her left. And he just didn't think he could ever do that again. Well, uh, end of high school class, and he meets this girl. He starts to date this girl. And she has his heart. He really, really likes her. They date for a year. They date for a couple of years. And uh, he takes her to this restaurant on the beach. And they have a good time. And after eating, they go walk on the beach. And he stops her. And he gets down on one knee. My oh boy. Oh, man. And he pulls out a ring. And before he can even open the box, she says, don't even think about it. <laughs> and he was heartbroken. What? His whole world. Then she said, until. And hope. The flat line. The, the heartbeat came back. Until. OK, what's the condition? Until you have some kind of positive relationship with your father. We're not getting married. And you can't even stay in the same room with your father for so long. Mm -mm, you got to have. Well, now he had some uh, motivation to go hang out with his father a little more. It wasn't genuine motivation. It was girlfriend motivation. Nonetheless, he went to go see his father. And each time was still awkward, a little better than the time before, but never really comfortable. But he got to the point where he visited his father enough that his girlfriend finally accepted to be his fiancée, and eventually they got married. So 
So they got married. And uh, now his, his wife is a lot like my wife. My wife is very blunt. I know what my wife is thinking because she will tell me sometimes with tact, sometimes not. Well, that was his wife. And uh, so he and his wife were visiting his dad one day. And the wife says to the dad after about 15 minutes of conversation, Mr. Montgomery, you know, I'm curious. You never visited her when he was a kid. And her was like, this is not the time. He's trying to signal. He's not saying this. He's trying to signal to her. Like, oh. He's trying to change the subject. But the words were already out of his wife's mouth. And the dad had like this drop jaw look like, what am I going to say? So when his dad stands up from the chair, and he leaves the room, his dad comes back to the room, and he has a box.
When I get to put together on my phone, my favorite playlist on Spotify, all the songs I like, because that music inspires me. And I think, God, sometime before creation says, I know my son Chris. I know what's going to inspire his heart to look to me. Here's the music he's going to like. Every good and perfect gift comes from his heart. It doesn't come from anywhere else. God before creation knew, I'm going to have someone make nut butters. <laughs> Mr. Morris loves nut butters. <laughs> now you know what? We laugh, but I'm serious. It's stuff like that that heart started to help me to understand how good God is. The little stuff that we totally ignore because life's bigger stuff hunkers down and says, oh man, I can't pay the bills, I can't, this is all, and these bad things start to pile on us. Oh, I hate life. But it takes my eyes off the good things, every good and perfect gift. Surround us every day. I walked on this campus yesterday and I saw this incident happen in the parking lot and I saw students just run to aid this young lady student. And my heart was warm. I said, man, these are some good kids. And you know what I thought when I saw them? Every good and perfect kid. Seen through the love of you guys, I know it's not We're going to start there today. I'm going to end right there today. We're going to start the rest of the week on that. I need you to understand that. Everything good comes from the God. Because He is good. And my prayer is twofold. Number one, for you to see the goodness of the Father. And number two, when we do see the good things that the Father gives us, may we transfer that to Him and not to something else. Not like the prodigal son who fell in love with the good things of the Father, which was the inheritance. So much so that he left the Father. But he found himself in pig slop and realized, you know what? The good stuff is back with my Father. Very good and perfect. <clears throat> Let's bow our heads. God, thank you. Thank you that you shower us every day with blessings from above. The trick is do we see them? Do we pay attention to them? Or do we allow the negative things in life to overwhelm us? May we not take our eyes off of you. May we continue with each and every day have a clearer picture of your love and your goodness. And tomorrow and this afternoon we're going to talk more about how that goodness shows itself. Bring us back. Bless every student here in their classes, every staff. And we pray. Amen.